I, I can't help but get the feeling that in the last 24 hours, this government and the police have sought to draw a line under the era of policing by consensus and cuddles Costa and say things have changed. The gang patch ban comes into effect or has come into effect at midnight. And also yesterday, all remaining charges against Brian Tamaki and his associates for a series of supposed breaches of COVID regulations during a series of demonstrations or protests in the Auckland domain during the time of lockdown were abandoned by police prosecutors. Some of the charges already dismissed by the court but yesterday, the police just walked away from the remaining charges. And Brian Tamaki uh, and Hannah, his wife, walked from the court freed of uh, that imposition. Uh, Brian Tamaki joins us on the line now. Firstly, Brian, congratulations. Thank you, Sean, and good morning. And it's darn well a good morning. <laughs> yeah. Three years this has been going on, right? Three years. Yes, three years. Um, amassing thousands, tens of thousands of photographs from the police and over 20 police witnesses gathering um, evidence and information for that day in court three years later. And year. your <coughs> contention always was that you actually abided by what the regulations were at the time. You actually discussed with the Commissioner of Police himself, Mr Costa, before these yep. demonstrations, what you were going to do, and you were tacitly given a nod. Well, what I did was, Sean, and this is what people of the Kiwis probably didn't quite understand, this was a win for the New Zealand Bill of Rights because I believe that our rights matter in an emergency. And I pressed the commissioners to say, it is my right to protest, do you both agree? Both commissioners, and they said, yes, we do, and we will protect that. So I said, good. So under level four and Auckland being shut up for five weeks, people are hurting. You're damaging the population. It's my duty to stand. Help me. Now you agree that I can protest. What's the next step? And they said, you have to keep COVID-19 restrictions, otherwise you'll breach the law. And I said, then give me the COVID restrictions and we will go out there to our best of our ability to keep them and um, stay within the COVID law. And that's what we did. All right. Um, and then they come for you anyway. Yeah, Rob Mansfield is yep. your lawyer. He's bloody good, but he, I imagine he's not cheap. Brian, how much have you spent in the last three years on this case? I don't, I don't really know the exact case. My wife is the finance minister. It means I can move <laughs> into the areas I do well. <laughs> she knows. But you know what? People have been generous. People have given, but we've carried most of the brunt of the cost. And um, let's just say it's been provided really well, and we're okay. It's been costly. But the point is, this became a political yeah. uh, issue after a while. And that was the big highlight. This highlighted political prosecution involvement at the highest level from Jacinda Ardern and the Labour government. No doubt about it, because at a certain point, the police got to say to me, you have a right to protest, keep the COVID restrictions, and we'll make it safe. Would it be a matter of two days later that we had a call from a prominent um, Labour minister, cabinet minister, who wanted to have a Zoom with me as well, and with the um, deputy commissioner, police commissioner. So now you had a, a commissioner, and one of the top politicians sitting in the same seat looking at me, conversing with me, trying, one was trying to convince me that my rights don't matter and the other one was saying well we do need to recognise your rights. So they all admitted that nobody was certain about how to go about doing all of this. So least of all us the people um, we had to go out and do this even if they were uncertain about the rules, we did everything yeah. to the law yeah. And we, we won. So there have we been under... absolutely no convictions of anyone in relation to this. The entire thing has collapsed like a house of cards, hasn't it? Yep. Yes, it has. And you know what? 
the taxpayers should be upset about this and rate payers at the Well, yeah, I would be too if I, you know, I mean, Ron Mansfield's yeah. happy. He gets paid either way, doesn't he? Um, well, apart from that, look, I want to just allay any sort of anger in the, the people that are listening to this. This is a big win for the people. This was a win for the New Zealand Bill of Rights, and we had the right to protest even during a state of emergency. I still feel and like I want to know how it got this far, though, though, Brian. Well, they were targeting me. That's just, yeah. I'm being straight up. They were targeting me. And I'll tell you the truth, because, you know, as most people know, but we need to be straight up here. They knew I had the courage to stand up to what I believe was illegal lockdowns, and an illegal mm. mandate to force people to take a medical procedure and lose their jobs. That's why I stood, yeah. because I heard the pain of the people. And that's why I did it, uh, Sean. Now, yeah. they knew I had enough influence with people, and one of the big problems that the commissioners had were gang elements and other protesters that are ready <laughs> to basically bust out on the basis of the Black Lives Matter protest mm. that just did it without any... But I said to them, I've got a hold of all of these people, brought them together, and I've got them to do this in peace. And yeah. I said, I've been with the commissioners. Let's make this a legal as possible and you still have the right to have a voice for the people yeah. about these. Well, Brian, you down. get off. We have a new police commissioner. The GANPAC ban comes in. Do you think we're yeah. in a new era of policing and do you welcome the departure of Andrew Costa? No, it's like the hikoi in the Māori movement. Everything now has been allowed to um, strut itself because of the Labour government's loose um, government and the way that they've treated people. It's made, built anger. And right now what we need is, in the middle of this, talks, peace, it's possible. Same with the hikoi, they're mm. angry. The gangs are angry. They're Tell you, angry. Mo most people mm -hmm. at the Hikoi, Brian, weren't angry. They had no friggin' idea what was going on. No, they were hoodwinked by leaders that were angry. Yeah, And yeah. the misinformation that came through the mainstream media, they are the terrorists in this country, by the way. Mm. They have they have withheld vital information from the yeah. public, and they incited that Hikoi yeah. up to the bridge. There wasn't the numbers, and it was just mainly radicals, but the media... The Herald. Yeah, they promoted it. Brian, a lot of they people promote, are texting me saying, who was the minister you had the Zoom meeting with? The minister was um, sent from Jacinda was Willie Jackson. Oh, of course it was. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was, the minister, he was the minister, caucus minister yeah. of the Māori the Maori caucus. Caucus, yeah, which basically and now he, is more powerful than Chris Hipkins. He is fundamentally he, he the told, leader of the Labour Party. Exactly. And yeah. he said that he was sent by Jacinda herself to dissuade me because she knew I'd be a problem to them. Yeah.